Hello my dear friends, you're on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 23rd of December of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. First, let's discuss the situation in, in Ukraine, the global scope of the situation in this area. And according to information we have, uh, the Ukrainians, more and more people from Ukrainian authorities are saying that the situation is going to get v v worse for the Ukrainians and nobody, nobody in Ukraine will be able to avoid mobilization half a million of Ukrainians. At the beginning of the special military operation, around 40 million, uh, the Ukrainians have a population of around 40 million. As of uh, 23rd of December, there are a little bit plus minus 20 million. So half of a population of Ukraine have already left Ukraine. Lots of losses among the population and obviously uh, nobody, uh, currently nobody is able to, uh, to leave Ukraine and if Ukrainian authorities took a decision to send you or, or you on the front line you will be sent so this is exactly the message that ukrainian authorities are trying to send to ukrainians furthermore when talking about the uh, uh ukrainians themselves uh, as you can see there is a strike there is a strike and uh, mainly on this strike you can see just women and they're asking just for one thing please return us men our husbands our friends our relatives our grandfathers our brothers those who were mobilized or were sent to the combat line at the beginning of the special military operation so according to them the time has come the time has come to return us our relatives but as we know Zelensky don't have possibility to do this for many reasons and one of the most important is that they need to keep army and he can just make the army bigger but not to make army less uh, furthermore according to information we have the Ministry of Defense have already reported that uh, uh, the Ukrainians are planning to start mobilizations among the people who left Ukraine of course they can't force the Western countries to send these people back to Ukraine but they make uh, can make a lot of um, legal things that will force the Ukrainians abroad to return back and obviously we understand that this is going to be one-way ticket nobody who returns back to Ukraine will be uh, have possibilities to return from Ukraine to leave Ukraine for example once again I was talking today with one Ukrainian man he's my friend uh, from Ukraine and I called him and I told him and suggested him to leave Ukraine and he has possibility to uh, come to me to my place and to uh, stay um, at my home for the next two three months because uh, the next two three months is going to be the most difficult months in Ukraine because five uh, half a million is a very big number and a lot of people will be mobilized and he told me that it will cost me ten thousand dollars I told him that uh, now, the, no, you're, you're, you're telling me the wrong things. Now it will cost you $10,000, but in two or three months, it will cost you uh, $50,000 because then it's going to be much, much more difficult to leave Ukraine. He told me that he will think about this, uh, but you know that it's very difficult. It's very difficult to leave Ukraine. It's very difficult to find the destination because you can't trust anyone in Ukraine. For example, on this article, we can see that one of the Ukrainian propagandists left Ukraine uh, for some meeting in Europe regarding the uh, Ukrainian support. And when a uh, time came um, to return back, he refused to return to Ukraine, saying that I don't want to die. Basically, he doesn't want to die. And of course, this is the big scandal because one of the propagandists who used to talk about supportive Ukraine and giving uh, Ukraine lives for Ukraine left Ukraine uh, and he was the first like he was in the first lines in the first in this uh, first church or something like this another interesting funny case that Ukrainians mobilized the entire football team so just Ukrainian military authorities came to one football club a balloon it's not like the uh, club of uh, fourth or twelfth league of ukraine this is the club of the highest top of ukrainian football association and they just mobilized 25 football players so we see that they're going to be a mass obviously this is going to be a mass and uh, uh, if you ask my opinion, if and if someone someone from Ukraine can listen to my words, I suggest you run, 
run as fast as possible, run as far as possible. And even if you don't have possibilities to take your family with you, run by yourself. Don't watch back, just run safe for your life because you need to understand that the uh, you need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself. You haven't possibilities to solve the issue in the past. Now you need just need to take care of yourself. If you can do this, just run away. Just run away and that's it that I can suggest to you. Now we're moving to the situation on the ground and we're going to start from um, Odessa area. During the previous night we got few updates that the Russians launched another massive wave of uh, drone strikes, Lancet strikes and grand strikes in Odessa area. The explosions took place in the training centers on the north of Odessa. We have another very interesting Lancet video probably for the first time from this area. We got the first video from this territory. The Russian Lancet discovered the uh, part parking of Ukrainian boats that Ukrainians probably were using for some military operations and as a result of Lancet strike few boats were damaged or even destroyed in this direction nothing special just probably to uh, to get the first video from this territory and nothing more so this is the Lancet strike nothing special now we are moving to Krynki. The Russians continue bombardments of Kherson, and this is not the first video. If we increase the number of updates since the beginning of December, we're gonna see that the Russians are pretty focused on Kherson, and they were they have been um, pretty focused on this area since the beginning of this month. The Russians destroyed the production of Ukrainian Navy drones. The Russians destroyed, uh, damaged the railway stations, a concentration of Ukrainian forces. So something interesting in ha is happening there. Maybe. The winter is coming, so that's why the Ukrainians are no longer able to keep their forces on the ground along the Dnieper River, and they try to concentrate and collect them in the city, Kherson itself, trying to save their just health. And this is the reason why the Russians are pretty focused in this area. When talking about Krynki, the situation haven't been, it hasn't been changed since the previous day. The Ukrainians published few videos of FPV drones against the Russian forces. Few tanks were damaged by the Ukrainian forces. Uh, few uh, Rus Russian soldiers were damaged and got by FPV drone strike. So nothing special, just a military routine without any progress uh, inside or outside from Krynki. Just the regular situation now we are moving to the Parozhye area. Uh, we have a few updates from this territory. The Russians published the video. Uh, this uh, icon added softly to this map, but according to the Russians, as a result of another offensive operation in this area, they managed to capture a significant number of prisoners of war, and that's it. So not nothing special. Furthermore, we got another video from this territory. Uh, the current situation, another Ukrainian striker got stuck in the Ukrainian, uh, let's say, ground on this area but once again no uh, changes on the ground now we are moving to the south Donetsk direction and we have very interesting details and updates from this territory the Russians continue their offensive operation if you will have few geolocations and the most important geolocation is coming from the southern part for example, on this video we can see how the Russians were attacking, not attacking because on this video we don't see, uh, we can't uh, say that this is an attack the only thing we can say that the Russians probably sent some reinforcement or some supply and support to the southern part of Novomikhailovka. They were using just a regular armored personal carrier. As you can see, there are no infantry or soldiers on board. This is just a regular armored carrier that were moving to the Russian positions. Maybe they were bringing, trying to bring some support, food, water, medicine, ammo, or maybe some infantry of some rotation. But during that uh, um, um, that passage, that uh, trip, the Russian armored vehicle got on minefield and basically was damaged and after that the Russians evacuated and they were trying to find the solution how to hide and not to got on the Ukrainian FPV drone strikes. So if we return back to the map the Russians were moving along this road this is the Russian movement and basically according to that video they managed to get this line and at this line the Russian armored vehicle was damaged and got on the minefield so we can say that as of today we got a, um, like a real geolocated confirmation list of Russian progress and access the most important and access to this road so if you remember a few like today we got update from Syriac map that as a result of Ukrainian counter-offensive that took place in the village the Russians were forced to step back from this territory but now we got another geolocation confirming that the Russians haven't retreated and maybe 
and maybe we need to wait a little bit more to understand the real Russian positions. We got very interesting videos from the Russian sources of a nightmare in Novomikhailovka. As you can see on this video, the Russians were bombing this territory with significant number of armed artillery systems. They were just ruining the city. This is the real artillery preparation, the real artillery preparation after which uh, uh, the Russians, any forces can start offensive operation. The Russians were using toss flame tower systems as you can see the russians were using uh, artillery bombardments so this situation is very difficult for the ukrainians in this uh, village but yet they haven't left this area and they try to hold this territory as long as possible what are they thinking about i can't tell you because i don't think they're able to hold this territory but they're trying to do this and probably they're going to do this for the next few days or even weeks but anyway as we discussed the numbers of Novo Mikhailovka are numbered. It's impossible to hold this territory under such a heavy pressure. But from the other side, this video confirms that the Russians still haven't uh, managed to bypass this yellow line. Let's add this on map. And they're still uh, the Russian forces are still located on the bottom of this yellow line. As soon as they manage to cross this territory, we can start counting days, maybe even hours or before Novo Mikhailovka falls. When talking about northern direction, the Russians published today the video of their another offensive operation on the road along the road T0524. On this video, we can see how the Russians were using few armored vehicles and tanks that were attacking the Ukrainian positions on this direction. They were storming that fortification area. And the most important that this is not the first video from this territory. During the previous days, we got at least two geolocated videos from this area and based Based on this video, we can make a conclusion that maybe the Russians have some different plans in the comparison that we discussed in the previous events. For example, if we increase the numbers of updates, we see that the Russians were pretty focused on this fortification area, and now they're trying to capture this. So now, when talking, not this is not strategical point, obviously, but this is operational point, operational target. And uh, the geolocations and the videos we receive tell us that the Russians currently are focused to capture this territory. Maybe this will allow the Russians to obtain some operational space and to uh, give them possibility to move further uh, to the uh, west or to the northwest or something like this or maybe it will allow them to secure the flanks but this is exactly that happens today furthermore i'll remind you that according to some mappers like syriac map uh, the russians managed to establish control over this territory so uh, probably uh, and as you can see this is a very huge progress from the russian side and uh, it completely correlates with the russian attempts to capture that stronghold we just discussed so we'll see we'll see what is going to be next but um, I'm, I, if you ask want to hear my opinion i don't think that the russians are planning to continue further to georgievka it's too risky they don't have such resources first they need to solve the issue with cities like konstantinovka paraskovivka novomikhailovka but once again if they want to do this first it's better to capture Pobeda and after that to continue further to the south and after that the entire area probably will be collapsed or will collapse uh, when talking about Avdeevka area we haven't received any like additional updates in comparison with the previous videos as we discussed the Russians are trying to move further to the uh, ninth block uh, and as a result of another offensive operation they managed to establish control over a few more tree lines let's say a few more meters were captured on the way to this area the russians during the previous night or day days managed to develop significant results in the vicinity of chiretina uh, probably the russians do have initiative but uh, the main positions of the ukrainians in this residential area is under ukraine control and this territory is located on the hill and just uh, the control over this territory can allow the Russians to control the entire territory and to control and to determine the rules of the battle in this area according to information we have the Russians are trying to move along one railway and along another railway furthermore there are some Russian units are moving further to the nor north in direction of Novokalino along this railway as we discussed these uh, three lines and these 
uh, part of the three lines is currently is under Russian control. The Ukrainians, of course, try to counterattack, both, but for now, without any, let's say, goals or without any, let's say, results, something like this. Now we are moving to Bakhmut Artyomov's direction. As you can see, I have updated the map according to the reports we have that the Russians continue movements along the channel uh, to the north, uh, to Chasov Yar, to Klishevka, and probably the Russians will continue movements along this area. Uh, and the main purpose of this uh, movement is to cut the main supply roads that the Ukrainian use along the channel. There are a lot of pontoon bridges, a lot of just bridges, lots of roads that you Ukrainian use to send reinforcements and reserves to Andreevka and Klishevka. And as long as pass, uh, the Russians are able to bypass this territory, the last uh, possibilities the Ukrainians have on this direction. When talking about Bogdanovka, we have today probably one of the most important update according to some mappers according to the russian sources as a result of offensive operation the russians somehow managed to establish control over this forest over the most important fortification area in the vicinity of bogdanovka i can uh, i can confirm this information or let's say to provide you evidence that this is the fake this is the only like opinion or some update that today we got from more or less reliable sources of the Russian forces, of the Russian side. So, once again, as a result of offensive operation, the Russians managed to penetrate the Ukraine defense belt and to enter this forest. Currently, they are trying to dig in deeper and to maybe to clear this territory, to force the Ukrainians completely leave this territory and so on. But, once again, if the Russians did manage to establish control over the hill, we can start counting not just day or minutes probably we can start counting seconds or even more probably the Ukrainians have already left Bogdanovka due to this situation this is one of the most important hill furthermore according once again according to some mappers like Syriac the Russians have already established control over some part of Bogdanovka yet uh, we haven't received even a single geolocate confirmation but very high chances that this is the current situation in Bogdanovka and uh, furthermore I believe that tomorrow in the morning according to the local time the progress is going to to be bigger and the Ukrainians uh, will be forced to step back towards the forest between Kalinovka and Chasov Yar. Once again, other sources are saying that the Russians also managed to establish on develop their positions uh, in the cemetery, new cemetery uh, uh, graveyard in this area and Chromova Bakhmut itself. Um, uh, I don't want to update the map because um, I try, I prefer to update the map based on the geolocated videos, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe uh, at some points it's better to use just the Telegram channels if you understand that reliable source provide you 100% information. But uh, let's wait. Let's wait. I believe that maybe tomorrow or the day after we're going to receive more updates. And uh, now the next, the, let's say not even the next, but the uh, final Russian target to finish this phase of offense special operation is to capture Popovsky Forest when talking about Bakhmut direction. After the fall of this territory, the entire bridgehead and foothold of the Ukrainians will be collapsed. So this is the situation in this area. Furthermore, we got another update that the Russians finally managed to capture the Axe uh, Aviation Base on the west of uh, Chernobylets and currently the Russians are making very small uh, storm operations in direction of these forests trying to um, secure and complete the mission and complete the capturing of these three lines in the forest lines on the north of Klishevka. Uh, they need this because um, anyway, uh, probably even maybe this year, we're going to see the Russian offensive operation in direction of Ivanovsky. This is going to be uh, probably unexpected as operation in Solidar, but this is exactly the operation that the Russians need to complete or to start this year before the next uh, battle for Chasov Yar. After Chasov Yar, the situation is going to be very bad for the Ukrainians. Now we are moving to Solidar direction, where the Russians are trying to storm the Ukrainian forces in Ivana Darivka and Siversk. Uh, for now, we haven't received uh, uh, nothing. Any, anything new in comparison with the previous video but once again according to geolocations we have 
probably as a result of Russian offensive operation, they managed to establish control uh, according to geolocations and so on over the territory, something like this. This is a very huge progress. Uh, the Ukrainians published the video how they managed to repel every single attack. But the same thing we saw in the northern part of Avdiivka. And regarding the Ukrainian videos, how they managed to repel the Russian attack, now we see that the clashes are taking place uh, in the northern part of chemical plant and the eastern part of Birdici. So sometimes geolocations means nothing, and sometimes we need to combine updates we have from the ground to see the real picture. Now we are moving to the north in direction of Liman area. We got also a lot of updates. The Russians continue bombardments of the Ukrainian forces in Tarskoe salient. On this video we see another Ukrainian tank who was trying to run away from the combat line, but he was captured and was recorded by the Russians and as a result of artillery strike or FPV drone strike that tank was damaged and was uh, later was abandoned by the Russians. Once again, I'll remind you that according to some Russian sources, as a result of clashes, the Russians currently control this territory on this area. We will, I will adjust the map. I will not show this territory as an area under Russian control, but I will increase just the gray zone, so no one's land, something like this. And now we're getting to Kupin's direction. We got uh, like um, not a fresh video. Let's say a video is fresh, but event is old. On this video, for example, we can see uh, the, let's say, how to say, the long version of Russian attack against the Ukrainian forces in Sinkovka. So this is uh, this, uh, this, the attack, how it looked like during the December, during the uh, from 10th till 20th of December of this year, how the Russians were storming the northern part of Sinkovka. Just calculate the number of armored vehicles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight armored vehicles, eight armored vehicles, uh, completely fully loaded with infantry troopers and stormtroopers, and just three tanks in front of them. One, two, three. Two tanks are combat tanks, and the first one in the heads of the convoy is the tank with the mining equipment. And this is one of the most important tanks. He demined the area, he secured the road, he allowed the Russians to enter Sinkovka without any problems. And just when times when time came, he just turned around and returned back to uh, Liman Pierve. So let's follow this tank. He started moving to the north, he continued demining process, he continues creating secured road. The Russians entered the Sinkovka with the horse, they start landing their infantry, of course, at some point point and during the this time there was some balagan because the Ukrainians start attacking the Russians with FPV drones but anyway just take a look at the number of forces the Russians were using and if you remember the Ukrainian version of this video the Ukrainians shown how they repelled this attack but now as you can see the picture was completely different the Russians managed to enter without any resistance they managed to capture the first buildings furthermore they managed to land the infantry uh, and turned back and returned f safely back to Liman Pierve and to Kupin direction without any problems. They even haven't lost even a single armored vehicle from their side. So this is the situation. Anyway, uh, this is an old video. This is not something new. Uh, probably the Russians managed to dig in deeper during that operation, but we still haven't received any video about any further progress to the south in direction of the central part or to the southern part of Sinkovka. So the clashes on this direction continues. And that's it for today. Military of Summer Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.